Come on, Potter. One more time. Okay. We roll the Grifter. I don't think we don't know how to weed them out. <laughs> What's up, brokies? Hypocrite Hunter here. And today, we're gonna be responding to Griffin Gaming's recent slanderous allegations. Now, for those who have no idea what the hell happened recently, the great grifter himself made some really bold claims about this one YouTuber by the name of Kratosis, accusing him of being into CP, zoophilia, and being autistic. And to debunk if these allegations are true or not, it is a resounding no. Kratosis is not that kind of person. Just because he and his friends have like animal profile pictures mean that they are furries or zoophiles. But Grifter Gaming, eager to continue his quest down the fucking abyss, pulls these slanderous allegations from god knows whichever part of his asshole, all just to try to prove his fucking point, as we're gonna find out in today's video. Also, I'd like to point out that the sections which showcase Griffin making his false allegations have been cut off from the actual video due to Kratosis reaching out to Griffin Gaming Live Archive to request a takedown. But thanks to a YouTuber by the name of Brother Near, who managed to clip those sections and upload them to his Twitter account, means that the full context of the live stream will still be there. Thanks to me simply taking the clip and putting them back where they belong in the original live stream. And without further ado, let's go take a look at this complete abortion of a live stream. Alright, so a send a blank thing, this is for you. I don't know what we're getting into. Disclaimer, everyone watching this shit. If this is like some absolute degenerate shit, this wasn't fucking me. But you're gonna spend the next one hour slandering Kratosis for CP habits, zoophilia, and even autism. Which, spoiler alert, none of these three things have anything to do with his video at all. So yeah, it's 100% fucking you and you only. When you... Like, I already know these either, are fucking either, either furries. Either subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out. Yeah, this is gonna be a real good time. Yeah, it is. Really tells us a lot about who Vincent Martin is before we even watch his video. Yeah, it does. So, should we get to it then? I think we should watch it, guys. Dude, shut the fuck up and just watch the video. No one wants to hear you talking like some retarded five-year-old. <sighs> I'll get the booze and the neurosurgeon on standby. I'll hide the revolver for now, then. Why don't you just go ahead and fucking swallow it? Oh my god, guys, I'm so edgy, look at me. Just the title of the video alone annoys me. When the hell did you ever claim to be better than many a true nerd? I understand Vincent is like, Oh, hey, John said Fallout 3 is better than you think, and Kurtosa said Fallout 3 isn't better than you think. I'm a copy of both. Yeah, this is incredibly stupid already. Yeah, man, it's so stupid. Bruh. I never claimed to be better than many a true nerd. I just criticized his awful video and did a play on his title. It seems like an unfortunate phrasing on his part. I get what he was trying to do, but it just comes off as poor framing on his part. Like somehow he thinks you think you are better than someone else. Just kind of a strange way to do it. Okay, now it's time to tackle Kretosis vs. Many a True Nerd. This certainly is not going to be an easy video to try to break down, but I will do my best. Also, why are you showing footage from Outer Worlds? Is this not a video about Fallout 3 and specifically your criticism of John's video on Fallout 3? Oh my god, man. Why aren't you using gameplay footage from the game being taught? Shut the fuck up. Dude, people always say this shit about me. It's like, I don't want to fucking play the dog shit games I'm talking about. Or you could have just ignored those comments, you know? As a kid, told you with the two, at least our frontal lobes work, nerds, yeah. And, you know, we don't have the tism. For it with the two, what the fuck, these guys again? Ah, uh, you can think of send it blank thing for this one. What the hell does Outer Worlds have to do with any of this? Outer Worlds- I don't know, man, maybe it's because it's like the spiritual successor to Fallout. Bruh! It doesn't have anything to do with either video, as neither of us bring it up in our videos. Oh my god. Bruh. It didn't even exist when John Maybe he's just playing a fucking random game in the background while he's talking. <laughs> Whoa! made his video, and I hadn't played it when I made my video. I can only assume it's being used as random generic background footage because he has nothing to fill the space. You really felt the need to point out the fact that, oh my god guys, he's not using the gameplay footage from the game he's talking about. Holy shit, dude. Whole, you can just tell these fuckers are homeschooled. Says the retard who created this abortion of a live stream. Regular owl with the two. Oh god, one of them has an owl. <laughs> That's right, man. But don't worry. 
He jerks off to his, I'm hoping you don't do the same. That's a nice argument, Senator. Why don't you back it up with a source? My source is that I made it the fuck up. So just because he has an owl profile picture, he's a zoo file? Bro, you are not making any fucking sense here. So why not just use B-Real from Fallout 3? Uh. B-Real? Do me a favor. Shut the fuck up. There will be parts of the video that I'll be leaving out. Dude, are they really autistically spurging out over the fact of him including random fucking gameplay in the background of a video? Jesus Christ. Now, so I'll be leaving a link to the video in the description along with a handy dandy time counter up above. That should be fairly accurate in case you want to see the bits I'm leaving out. So let's just jump right to the first section that I want to cover. Is appreciated, though not necessary, when the person links the video they're responding to, and he helpfully points out he will give time codes for it in his video. It sure would be a shame, though, if he skips out on stuff that actively destroys his points, you know, since he is going to be skipping stuff. The next part of his video I'll be skipping because it's not anything that really needs any kind of response. Bro, why do they all sound the same? What the fuck are you talking about? Two. John basically describes how you can skip part of the game and- Oh my god, dude, they all belong on the same fucking ride to school. <laughs> Autism reference so fucking funny, am I right? Fallout 1, 3, and New Vegas. After that, he describes in extensive detail how the game directs you to Megaton fairly well through the world design. It's a point I agree with, but I'm cutting it for time, as it's a fairly large section, to which my only real response is that I agree. I can't really add much to it. However, there are a couple comments he makes in that section that I am clipping to respond to. If anyone wants full context, you can just go to his video for it. Instead, most players want to find their way to Megaton, and I want to examine this initial journey in detail as it really demonstrates the level of care and craftsmanship that goes into Fallout 3's world design. While I do agree that leading the player to Megaton through world design is handled well, I have to heavily disagree with the praise for the What the fuck is even happening? level of care and craftsmanship that goes into the world design. Dude, I can't even tell what the fuck is even occurring at this point. Piece of advice here. Stop pausing and watch the fucking video, retard. I can't go too in-depth on that right this second, but I will absolutely refer back to this line throughout the video as I continue to respond to his arguments. Here, Creed is leading the audience to believe he'll have an argument to counter many a true nerd's claim later on in the video in a rather mocking manner. It's not mocking, though. Sure, later on I use it as a point of slight mockery, but right now I'm just disagreeing with the point being made and planting a little flag for people to remember it for later. Some people like to call this poison in the well. Poison in the well. Who the f- Oh my god. Dude, this is literally like, oh my, dude. Well, or attempting to poison the well is a type. This is infuriatingly autistic. I'll just fucking say that. Of informal fallacy where adverse information about a target is preemptively presented to an audience with the intention of discrediting or ridiculing something that the target person is about to say. Poison the well can be a special case of argumentum ad hominem. And the ter um, could you uh, define the word well? I don't really understand what's being poisoned. Bruh. It was first used with a sense by John Henry Newman in his work, Apologia Pro Vita Sue. The etymology of the phrase lies in well poison. Do they think this makes them look good? Oh my fucking god, man. An ancient wartime practice of pouring poison into sources of fresh water before an invading army to diminish the invading army's strength. How the fuck is that poisoning the well? Yeah, what the fuck? I suppose Vincent comes from the bizarro world where everything is backwards and Superman is a dumb villain. <laughs> well, I mean, that's kind of the world we live in right now. Remember when Superman crashed that ship into a massive city and reduced it to ashes? Great fucking hero there. Yeah, man. Actually, if he would have just crashed it into the ground, the collateral damage would have been much smaller. Shut the fuck up, dog. Oh, cuz with the two, RIP my last membership message. I do not see one, man. No idea. Uh, how far back did you send? I don't see a membership message. The last, I don't think I got them. No, the last membership message, I, no, shit, nobody sent a membership message tonight. Yeah, I don't know, man, I don't see one. But, uh, yeah, I got you. 
Love you. Oh no, so many reactions. I'm so confused now. I think they are too. Hey, punk. Welcome to Clown World. I just like to. Yeah, welcome to Clown World, bitch. We're already fucking there. We call it kicking the can down. The second I open this fucking video up, I already arrived. I thought you love it there, considering you're a clown yourself. On the road, because it's really more of a neutral and fun way of framing this rhetorical technique. Kick the can down the road, meaning to, <laughs> to avoid dealing with a problem, to postpone dealing with something in the hopes that it becomes someone else's problem, to leave a complicated issue for some other day, to avoid or delay making an important decision normally on a regular basis. Dude, why the fuck can't their parents just beat them and take away their computer? <laughs> Sounds like what your parents should be doing to you, so projection much? SNK nostalgia with the five months at tier one. Gotcha, man. Bruh. Such no. By all definition, what I did is not kicking the can down the road. In my videos, I'll sometimes say I'll be coming back to something later, but that's not a point I'm abandoning. It's something I fully intend to return to. It would be more accurate to say this is you prepping to use John's own words against him several times later on when they become appropriate in context. No, I love Megaton, and that's partly because it has great visual design. Because it's easier to get attached to a place. Either, if it's either, either subscribe, distinct. donate, For example, or get the fuck I'm out. I'm sure I know where everybody lives in Megaton and in Rivet City, but in New Vegas's Good Springs, which has a much smaller population, it was only years and multiple playthroughs later that I learned Easy Pete sleeps in the long three-room house in the middle of town. I always just assumed that was. Player housing. Assume. I can't remember off the top of my head where Trudy sleeps. Now I think about it. I have an issue with John's comparison here. It's really <laughs> not fair to be comparing Megaton to Good Springs. That yeah, was... man. That's like totally not fair. I mean, they're obviously very fucking different. I guess. What the fuck is this shit? It's a video game analysis video, you dumb motherfucker would almost be as bad as comparing New Vegas to Rivet City. Oh. Yeah, dude, obviously Rivet City is nothing like New Vegas. Holy I fuck. Can't afford this shit. Holy fuck. El Cuz with the big black pussy, appreciate it, man. That's much more entertaining than this shit. Holy fuck. Bro with the two, so these three are the new Otaku Daikin now? I'm guessing so. I mean, they're furries, so they probably do appreciate CP just as much as Otaku Daikin does, so, yeah. There's that. What? What the fu- What? How is this similar to Otaku Daikun? So just because Kratosis and his friends have, uh, like, animal PFPs that makes them, like, what, furries? Bro, seriously, open your eyes. This ain't a fucking anime channel, retard. But even if it is, not all anime is hentai. Cause both are different categories of each other. Also, technically, Vault 101 is sort of the first town, so to speak. Or <laughs> yeah, obviously, man. Vault 101 is stacked. Or should I say, rather where you start the game out at. Does this guy have a grasp of English? Is it? <laughs> Oh, is it a second language or third, perhaps? It very much seems that way. After yeah. After all, here's a link that will help you spot them when you suspense it as being used. Pro tip: If you have this bad of a grasp on the English language, oh, dude, he's really going after somebody for a fucking typo in their fucking descript. Oh my god. Jesus. Christ. Your tax dollars at work is all I'm gonna say. Maybe don't make assumptions of a person's argument when you can barely understand it. So that might have been a better comparison to make? Not sure on that. Hang on a second. What was that about comparing New Vegas to Rivet City? And what actual issue did he have with John's comparison? He never actually said what the issue was yet, or rather, why it was an unfair comparison. Elaboration is for pussies. Says the fucking brony. Yeah, I sure hope he doesn't criticize me for not explaining something well enough for him. Dude, he should just criticize you for being a fucking animal jerk. <laughs> you want to fuck animals, bro. He has every right to talk as much shit about you as he wants. While Grifter care to explain or provide any sort of proof that this guy's a quote-unquote brony or he wants to do it with animals? 
Oh wait, you can't because my source is that I made it the fuck up. Megaton, it's a free fucking license. It is visually distinct and totally nonsensical. Again, this is something that will have to wait just a bit longer for me to go in depth on. But what is worth responding to here is everything else. The comment about knowing where everyone lives seems a tad bit anecdotal. The general layout of Megaton is fairly well done, and I think I know where everyone lives too. However, I don't know where anyone lives in Rivet City. I can't totally agree with Gree's reaction here, at least to this, because instead of saying something like bolstering your pitch with a display of ignorance is not that great of an idea, or something else to that degree. I'm sorry, what? What is he even trying to say here? I'm pretty sure you make typos in your video descriptions because it's autocorrect, right? No, I just literally spam a bunch of fucking keywords in a paragraph format so I can get into the search algorithm. I honestly don't spend even more than three minutes typing my fucking, you know, descriptions. They're just there as fucking algorithm based. So if somebody searches for a specific topic, the uh, description gets flagged and pushes it up through search results. That's kind of the strategy when I'm playing YouTube is like just load your fucking description up with key terms in like a sentence format so that when people look up those things, your description gets flagged by YouTube and recommends those videos. Here. Yeah, what the fuck is he even saying? This is just total word salad. What yeah. issue does he have with my reaction? That I... Yo, can you define what word salad means? Remember where some people in a game town live? And don't remember where people in a different game town live? Does he not understand you had a problem with Revit City's layout? It's a personal thing that varies between people. So it's not much of a point. Yeah, man, the layout of the city was just not appropriate for me. <laughs> Wait, oh my god. I don't know about you guys, but this is some major pseudo-intellectual shit I'm witnessing here. Hey, good news, guys! The neurosurgeon says acts that go against the Geneva Convention are covered free of charge for our post-video brain repair. Please, fucking do it! Bro, do it. Do it. Instead of saying something like bolstering your peach with a display of- Do it, pussy. Do it. Of ignorance is not that great of an idea. I- Fuck, he put it away. really don't get this line. It just seems like he's saying I should have said this, but John isn't claiming ignorance. The argument I just made was that this is anecdotal at best. It's talking about personal experience, and not how everyone playing the game will feel or remember it. He kicks the burden of proof down the road again, and then follows this up with a display of how pointless a observation like this is by showing he can do the same exact thing as John. And I can't see what purpose it serves besides adding, uh, you know, that sprinkle of negative framing to his video. Burden of proof. Overview. How the fuck am I kicking the burden of proof down the road here? There's nothing that can actually be proven here. Again. John's claim of knowing where everyone lives is entirely anecdotal. I can't disprove that he knows this, and him knowing this is not proof of the game being well designed. Obviously. Mention, knowledge of where everyone lives is not some measuring stick used anywhere for something being well designed. There are people that can memorize lines in a movie hearing them only for the first time. That does not therefore mean those I lines are well written. Hell, I what? need someone who can't remember their house number as an adult when they have lived there all their life. Are you speaking from experience? You don't even know your fucking house number? Judging the quality of how well designed an area of the game is, based on a single person's memory, is- I know, man. He's such a fucking cock tease. Why does he keep putting the fucking gun away? Fucking stupid. As has been thoroughly proven, especially in the courts, human memory is completely fucked. Wonderful Experiment was a group of people told to memorize a situation they were currently in while in the park. Unbeknownst to no one fucking cares. <laughs> Number one, you're the one who doesn't care, so stop projecting. Number two, why the fuck are you watching this video then? Oh, SNK and the soldier with the two, they sound like Mystery Science 3K, but really bad. They sound like something, alright. James Hilton with the five, they made a four hour video like this. They need, oh yeah, 100%. Please do me a gigantic favor and take a long walk off a short dock. Of them, a staged robbery took place and they were then asked what the hell happened. The vast majority of them got misled by a plant in their ranks who described a lady wearing a
So when I so beautiful man, it really does fit perfectly. It really does. That should be their intro music, man. Fairly new. One hundred percent. This should be their intro track. Dude, the irony in you projecting this is just out of the fucking roof. Really say I'll be coming back to a phrase. That's a problem. That's poisoning the well. When Vincent Martin implies something very negative about me, it's just fine and dandy. Speaking of that, some people really bloody hate the bomb, by the way, because it's odd to build a town around a bomb. Odd is the understatement of the fucking millennium. It is not odd to build a town around a nuke. It's downright fucking stupid. Appeal to common sense argument. But appeals to common sense in a post-apocalyptic world eh, strikes me as a bit absurd. And also it's a logical fallacy, but we'll be encountering a lot, I'm thinking. You can't just claim something is a fallacy and move on. <laughs> Even if it is a fallacy, which it isn't in this case, you have to explain why it's wrong. People in the post-apocalypse will still have common sense. The difference is the common sense will be different as the daily struggles and idioms have now changed from a normal everyday America. People will know a nuclear bomb explodes and give off radiation sickness and poisoning. Not to mention, the people who settled the Megaton Crater were people who survived the fucking war in the first place. Yeah, dummy. Oh my god. Why are they applying? Dude, they're like sitting here trying to talk shit. about fucking... I can't afford this shit! They're like trying to apply real world logic to the design of a fucking town and fall... Dude, it's a fucking video... Mmm... Dude, this shit is fucking beyond dumb. These motherfuckers are a special breed. An absolute fucking special breed. I'm just gonna bring up an old clip that I responded to this motherfucker about regarding realism in video games. Cause apparently, this guy has not learned a single thing since that time. And also because I hate repeating myself. Who can fucking care? Oh my god. Oh my god, guys. In real life, you wouldn't be able to put um, that level of zoom scope on a Tommy machine gun. It would affect the accuracy so badly that you wouldn't really be able to sh- oh, 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 Shut up! Like, shut the fuck- Dude, this type of shit is beyond fucking corny. It's a video game. No one fucking cares if they didn't have a drum mag in World War II for a fucking pistol. If you want realism, go play some fucking war simulator and nerd the fuck out. No one cares about that shit in Call of Duty. Holy fuck. I mean, it must be completely unheard of that people want a World War II experience in a World War II game. If not, why call it a World War II game whatsoever? Ah, uh, yes. Everything has to be exactly the way you want it. You are now acting like Wings of Redemption, where just because he says so, nobody can do whatever the fuck they want in the match, am I right? They know what the bombs are. They know what the bombs do. The people currently living in Megaton fucking know what the bomb can do. Appeal to common sense? Motherfucker, claiming that people surviving in the wasteland wouldn't know a nuclear bomb as a threat is in itself an appeal to stupidity fallacy. It's not like the people living in the wasteland talk about the fucking bombs or anything, or how they caused all this. It totally makes sense they would settle around a literal boogeyman they fear. We also have evidence that people know what the bomb does because a rich twat in a tower wants to set it the fuck off so he can have a nicer view. The game actively showcases that the people of Megaton are fucking retarded. Like Moira's survival quest, which showcases that she has no idea how to actually survive an apocalypse at all. How the hell are supermarkets going to have food forever that people can always scavenge? Remember. Oh my god. 
This is your fucking social security checks at work, everyone. This is what you pay taxes for, just FYI. Because I guarantee you these motherfuckers aren't working. I mean, I can say the same about you, my dude. Just because you claim you have a job means that we have to believe you. So how do you know they're not working? She didn't expect the writers to be there. That was a surprise for her. And the only reason there actually was food there was because it was their own survival supplies. So unironically, she thought you could just go down to the local supermarket and get some food. This is an adult who has lived in the wasteland for at least 20 plus years. Fucking do it. Do you hear that? Do you hear that? Sounds like real life imitating art. Since Creed is not done with- Dude, I wish he would imitate the fucking art that he has on screen and just fucking go through with it, man. Honestly. Quit teasing everyone. Give the people what they want to see. Yeah, like you didn't make the clear enough for us earlier. I'm sure of it. I mean, after all. You know, grow up, put your big boy pants on. Not everyone who disagrees with you literally wants you to fucking die in a house fire, okay? I mean, not that I would be opposed to it, but anyway, you know, moving on from that shit. I mean, not that I would be opposed to it. His take down a megaton. I'll be kicking the can down the road again myself. I think this video is teaching me some bad habits, but best way to deal with it. And best to wait for Creed to be done with this section of John's video. Poison the well, or attempting to poison the well, is a type of informal fallacy where adverse information comes people that not be communicated. There's a fairly sensible reason for it. Actually, there isn't. The game tries to justify it, but fails utterly, and only makes this whole scenario somehow even more stupid. As Manya describes it, a plane crashed in that location creating the crater. Now already, this is a bit too much, as a plane wouldn't create a crater that deep. We're talking literal tons of soil being displaced as a result. My <laughs> Obviously. My question is, how deep is it? 20 feet deep? 30 feet? 40 feet? I, I mean, the depth does make all the difference, guys. I wonder if Creed did any research into this. I mean, obviously he should have opened up his fucking lore guide and gotten the answer. I didn't actually do any research into seeing how big the Megaton crater was, but I did a little bit to see real world comparisons, and given this real world comparison, a airliner with very similar specs to the crash B-29 bomber in Fallout New- <laughs> Oh my god. Please make it fucking stop. Then click out the fucking video, retard, and save your sanity. Oh, but wait, guys, I forgot who I'm talking to here. I need th that money. I really do. I need that money to pay my bills, the electric bill, the internet bill. Vegas created a crater about 32 feet deep, 92 feet wide, Please and stop. 131 feet long. I didn't think anyone would make an argument this fucking pedantic. So since he couldn't be bothered to do the research... Um, can we get a, uh, definition of the word pedantic? Beyond reading a headline for an article and listing measurements he clearly doesn't comprehend, I went ahead and did the research for him. So looking into the Ethiopian airline incident, the plane in that crash was a 737... Dude, I would actually rather get my fucking crater expanded than listen to this shit. Oh, yeah? Max 8 with a length of 129 feet. Oh my god, dude. All right, fuck it. Eight inches and a wingspan of 117 feet, 10 inches. The irony in the ADHD kid playing this fucking song. This video. I mean, obviously, bro, a crater of this magnitude could never be created by a fucking plane. Duh. Holy shit, dude. I had referenced a video of 10 tons of topsoil being dumped from a dump truck. Why? Why are you referencing a fucking dump truck? Oh my god, dude.
The reason I did this was to clearly demonstrate the sheer amount of dirt needed to be displaced in order for this crater to even exist. Keep in mind, this is loose topsoil too. Not the hard compacted dirt that would actually be there. Yeah. The Ethiopian flight also exploded! So how is there a perfectly intact nuke left? Not only that, but there had to be enough scrap from the plane left oh in order my to God. build the tower. <laughs> they state, in-game, that scrap from the plane and from an airport a few miles away was used to build the town. <sighs> so significant portions of the crashed plane would need <sighs> to still be intact to even use. Since there is proof that it can happen in the real world... Oh, fuck off. I will just assume that it isn't unrealistic for something similar being completely believable in a video game. You see, there's an old video from about five years ago that discusses Fallout 3 in New Vegas called The Shandification of Fallout, which basically discusses- I just want to know why this is even a discussion, bro. What effect does this actually have on fucking Fallout 3? Does it make the game better? No. Does it make it worse? No. <laughs> Does it make them look like absolute fucking spads? Yes. I'm sorry, man. Discussing video game lore? Not allowed in 2022. This is how games work better if their basic logistics have been thought through, and it's obvious how basic human needs are being met. So in the case of Megaton, the city has food because the one upside of the apocalypse is that wildlife is massive now, and there are plenty of mole rats right by the side of the town. First and foremost, there is absolutely nothing whatsoever in the entire game that references mole rats being a food source for Megaton. And there's nothing to support John's claim here. No one in town hunts them. No one in town herds them. There isn't even a scrap of mole rat meat in Megaton as far as I've been able to find. When I said this was a pure fabrication, I wasn't exaggerating. Yeah, man, he was John dead serious. literally just saw that there were three entire mole rats behind the town. Yeah, dude. And concluded that they absolutely must be the town's food source based on that alone. Also, if these three mole rats are a food source, then what happens after you kill and eat them? No more food, I guess. I edited out the Jonathan Franks tell you you're wrong for 47 seconds and some of Creed's framing. So it would be simpler to break down without all the fluff of the original video. It was 16 seconds of Jonathan Franks and 10 seconds of Kratos' doing it, which would be 26 seconds, not 47. Why Bruh. I may try to argue that this is hyperbole to emphasize a point. Fucking no. Hyperbole would be saying, I edited out Creed doing an hour of John Frank's fabrication. And what you're engaging in right now is semantic. Let me pull up the fucking definition of semantics, guys, just in case everybody here has a fucking second grade level of understanding. Like, oh my god. Oh my fucking god. You need to shut the fuck up! Not 47 seconds, which sounds more like you actively tried to time it and fucked up. Or, you know, you just fucking lied. Oh, that possibly can't be the case. No, we don't have mountains of evidence that Vincent lies. Dog, this makes Walt Jr. look like America's next fucking rocket scientist. Dead ass. I'm putting John's statement in blue. Bro, Walt Jr. looks like a certified genius compared to these motherfuckers. You just to get rid of Oh my god, bro. Jesus. Anything but that. I see this. I'm walking in the other world. This is. This is doing fucking better. Oh no. Oh my god. I think there's more to hear about. I was thinking you're on the day, but yeah, I'm done. I think there's more to hear about. I'm not going to get too much more to hear about. I'm just going to get too much more to hear about. I'm just going to get too much more to hear about. I'm just going to get too much more to hear about. I'm just going to get too much more to hear about. I'm just going to get too much more to hear about. I'm just going to get too much more to hear about. I'm just going to get too much more to hear about. I'm just going to get too much more to hear about. I'm just going to get too much more to hear about. I'm just going to get too much more to hear about. I'm just going to get too much more to hear about. I'm just going to get too much more to hear about. I'm so, in the case of Megaton, the city has food because the one upside to the apocalypse is that wildlife is massive now. This is making the claim that the wildlife that is massive for the apocalypse, which is weird to me, but let's move forward, is the source of Megaton's food. While it's very weak and vague, there's nothing seriously wrong with John's theory here. So this is apparently the part where we have to start pointing out that some of the parts of my video he's ignoring completely explain this away. First, I am correct about no one in town hunting or herding them. The town has, 
no hunters at all. No one refers to this as being their job or hobby in any way. But worse than that, as explained in the video, Moira's survival guide quest sends you to a grocery store for food. There's absolutely zero mention of hunting in any way, shape, or form. And even worse than that, mole rats are a part of her quest, they are seen as a pest and a nuisance, and she wants you to test a repellent to make them go away. Fucking do it, dude. Quit teasing everyone with you putting the gun in your mouth. Just fucking pull the trigger and get the shit over with. They even have her, the obvious dumb joke idiot character, theorize that they can be domesticated for food. Keep in mind... Bruh, if they make a four-hour video on me, I'm not watching that shit. Bro, the day that it happens is the day I become Jesus fucking Christ himself. We've all seen a thousand times by now that you'll just watch them anyway. That if Megaton were... I don't care. I am not sitting through this shit. Holy fuck. Why the fuck you lying? Why you always lying? Mm, oh my god. Stop fucking lying. A hunter haven? Or even just traded with hunters? There would be stalls of animal carcasses and meat hanging out to dry so it could be preserved. Yes, raw meat by itself in the sun is bad, but using salt or other methods can preserve it for the future. The fact <laughs> obviously not a single butcher style shop or person exists in the town means they do not hunt for their food. Creeds count. <laughs> Duh. I mean, obviously, man. Honor will be in red. There's nothing to support John's claim. Dude, I live at, uh, what is it? 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, Washington, D.C. There you go. In here, no one hunts them. No one in town herds them. There isn't even a scrap of mole rat meat. Naturally, he can't quote you correctly and can't even spell correctly. What the fuck is mole wrapped meat? We already knew he had a very, very loose grasp on the English language, but this is getting pathetic. He knew enough to say the word rat, but still had my quote as wrapped. What the f He probably used fucking speech to text, you dipshit. Why are you so fucking obsessed with spelling? Oh, wait, never mind. Never mind, I think we know the answer to that. I have A U T I S M. I have A U T I S M. Autism. Yeah, that's the answer. <laughs> happening here? If this is the caliber of my haters, then I either need to step my game up. Or I'm pretty fucking safe from criticism. <laughs> this has nothing to do with John's theory of how Megaton gets its food. It fucking do though. No one hunts. So who cares how big the fucking animals are if no one hunts them for food? The size of the animal being massive now has no direct correlation to food in Megaton because no one in Megaton hunts animals at all or even keeps them as herd animals. There is only a single fucking Brahmin in town. One animal does not... They got they talked about the death of Kevin Conway. Um, Kevin Conway is dead. He died on 11 11 2022. He originally stayed for Starfield. Not a sustained. There you go. Double herd make. So it's fine to say Cree is poisoning the well because of potential implications Vincent sees, but when Cree talks about the heavily implied statement John says about the mole rats being the town's food <laughs> source, he claims it has nothing to do with John's argument and there is no implication. This guy is something else. Not just that, but Vincent is reframing John's statement to be a theory. It was never presented that way by John himself. He simply stated it as though it's a fact and simply moved on, as if that's all it took to debunk the criticism against Fallout 3. In reality, the food issue with Fallout 3 is so dire to the point of breaking the base level logic of the entire Capital Wastelands Brit with the two, the faster we leave the internet, the better. I know, when the fuck are you picking me up, Brit? We need to get the fuck out of here. Surviving. To put it in simple terms, humans need food to survive, so they need to eat various vegetables, fruits, and animals. Plants need sunlight and water to survive, yet there is no water. Yeah, I thought it was a pretty good eulogy as well, man. It really came from the heart. Water in the capital wasteland, allegedly by the game's own logic. And we see no living plants anywhere in the world. If there are no plants, then herbivores wouldn't exist, so carnivores could only hunt each other or humans for sustenance. 
Hunting carnivores themselves is not a stable food supply, nor does it add nutrition for many carnivore species. For example, cats that need the meat of herbivores to create taurine, something essential for cats to even live. This is compounded. They should just drink some fucking Monster Energy, bro, or some Red Bull. With needing to fight for your meal. Sure, you can do it, but how often are you going to be able to sustain those injuries from fighting with a fellow carnivore and your prize is not some meal fat and meat, but built lean to be a predator? In essence, the ecosystem is completely fucked and would collapse within a year, if not sooner. You could say, in part, it really just takes John's example of the capital wastelands, massive wildlife, mole rats, and turns them into the primary focus for Creed. <sighs> Alright, listen here, you little shit. Mole rats were offered as an example by John as a food source. We know this is false because of Moira, but expanding on that, we have no butcher shops, no farms, no livestock besides a single Brahmin. Megaton cannot possibly be getting its food from hunting. Again, someone needs to be preparing all that meat for storage and for consumption. Keep in mind, none of the caravans we see outside are food merchants. Even if they were, there isn't enough towns in the wasteland that are shown to be growing crops or herding animals to sustain the rest of the <laughs> wasteland. At most, we get like two. Canterbury Commons has some Brahmin in a pen next to the town. and Yeah, obviously, bro. Some Brahmin fucking noodles? Hell yeah. Rivet City has a hydroponics lab where they grow crops. Neither of these are enough to sustain the rest of the wasteland. They barely have enough to feed themselves, let alone multiple towns. Worse than that, a town like Megaton would need daily deliveries of food to barely survive. All the caravans we see in the base game consist of one guard, one merchant, and one pack brahmin, which likely wouldn't be enough to carry the food a town like Megaton would need to survive. We typically give things like this a pass, because it's a video game, but for Fallout 3, the entire world fails to properly establish how everyone is staying alive when there's no water and as a result no food compounding the issue when that's a core aspect of the why are you even playing this fucking game bro this is the question we need to all ask if this is literally so fucking bad to you why do you even care like, if you can't suspend reality for four fucking seconds to play a video game, why the fuck are you even playing a video game in the first place? That's the better fucking question. Says the one who's watching something he doesn't like. Story. This is a straw man argument that didn't even need to be made. A straw man, sometimes written as straw man, is a form of argument and an informal fact. Fallacy of having the impression Tell me if you know someone. Fallacy is said to be attacking a straw man. Seth, Seth, no. no. No, this isn't a fucking straw man in the slightest. Once again, Vincent conveniently ignores the rest of my video in order to make this point. So this entire section about food is about 20 minutes long in the actual video, where I cover all the bases, including why wildlife can't exist in the capital wasteland. He knows it's there and chooses to ignore it. It is very clear in the vi <laughs> oh my God. video that the argument goes far beyond the mole rats alone. He can't attack the arguments you make because he doesn't actually have a response to it. He just has to attack your character instead. You're poisoning the well. You're framing things negatively. He doesn't seem to have any actual counters to your arguments. Attacking my character? Uh, what's that called again? An ad hominem fallacy. Not to mention this mental genius has in fact himself just created a straw- How long did these fuckers like collaborate in order to make this video? Like, alright, you come in and chime in with the definition right now. Like, you just know, like, so much time and effort went into making this video, and it's still this fucking shitty. Not gonna lie, this video has a ton more effort put into it than all your videos combined. So it sounds like you're just projecting here, dude. Straw man argument. He has distorted your argumentation from its original form so he can attack it. Obviously. What Creed should have done to disprove John's theory is to see if there was any meat of any type of wildlife that could be found in Megaton. So his argument here seems to be that because there's food in Megaton, that means they have food. This just skips any logical progression of how it might get there, 
and simply assumes that must make sense somehow. That would have given John's theory the killing blow instead of him just hyper-focusing on the mole rats. This might be speculation, but another reason Creed might have had to become fixated on the mole rats would be to add the unnecessary proof to his straw man and to insult the Pollyann head in the clouds a Venter archetype that Moyer Brown is using with this. So the three of us listen to this part several times, and when he says, Polly and head in the clouds, we have no fucking clue what he's trying to get across here. Like, I don't even know what he's saying for the Polly and part. We mentioned this on stream, and people in the chat had told us that what he tried to say was Polly. Diana, which is a book from 1913, and a movie from 1960, which is about someone who is blindly optimistic. I don't know why you wouldn't just say blindly optimistic, so everyone understands it, rather than making a reference story. to a movie that is over 60 years old that a lot of people are going to miss. Especially with how inept Vincent is at speaking the English language, because it genuinely came across as just him spewing more word salad like he does for the rest of the video. As to Moira's optimism, or as Vincent likes to call her, Moyer, I wouldn't call it blindly optimistic, just too stupid to comprehend the situation she's in or the state of the world as a whole. Remember, this is a character who tells you to go play with landmines and take enough rads to get radiation sickness. This is not an intelligent person. As far as head in a Oh my god, bro. So where's Spark with the four months just got here? What the fuck is this? I got the answer for you, man. SM, I have a -U -T -I -S -M, autism. That's what's going on here. What the fuck are you talking about? Cloud's inventor goes, that's also very clearly not what Moira is. John himself demonstrates <laughs> this with a line he gives as an example of a line he likes, where she says she stitched a smiley face into the back of your head to cheer you up, even though you can't see it. She's clearly a fucking moron. The game goes out of its way to make this clear repeatedly. Fuck, maybe you should move in with her and be among your kin, Vincent. More than that, though, he's insinuating that I didn't count all the other types of meat in town because that would prove John to be right. When it fucking doesn't. The presence of food does not explain how the food got there to begin with. Even if the town has tons either, of other either, animal either food donate, products, it or get the, fuck the question, out. where is all of it coming from? Who is preparing all the food for storage and use? Hell, Moira even implies they are trying to just find food in supermarkets hundreds of years after the bombs fell. To give an example of how stupid <laughs> the situation is, imagine if a town in the desert had tons uh... and tons of water, but no wells, no oasis near them, absolutely no source of water, and arguing that because the town is shown to have water, that's good enough on its own. It is not. She does briefly mention the idea of maybe domesticating them for milk and meat, but that's just an idea she has and nothing more. The very fact that she of all characters is presenting this idea too, it's probably meant to be taken as a joke, because she's a stupid character who commonly says stupid things. Personally, I think John's theory is pretty flawed. So, in the case of Megaton, the city has food because the one upside to the apocalypse is that wildlife is massive now. This is making the claim that the wildlife that is massive for the apocalypse, which is weird to me, but let's move forward, is the source of Megaton's food. While it's very weak and for the five you know, I heard it's three hours 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 Whoops, accidentally countered yourself there. Why it's like As a kind of soldier with a thumb, I'm very certain they don't look or look people in the eyes when they talk to anyone. Dude, they don't leave their fucking house. 
they have their mom go pick up fucking food and everything. They have their mommies do their laundry and all sorts of shit. Or their uh, public service worker or whatever the fuck in their home. I don't know. Sounds like you're speaking from experience. Sierra with the five, I argued about this against a British potato, and now I realize how much of a spat I was and would like to formally make an apology. Well, British potato, if you're watching this shit, hopefully you can find it in your heart to forgive him. He has seen the error in his ways. Logical that most residents of the capital wasteland must be sustained primarily on a meat diet that John is theorizing about. The residents of Megaton are in a unique position of being located at one of the major trade hubs in the capital wasteland. It's highly likely that they get a more diverse food stock from the traders for their diets than the average DC citizen in Fallout 3. Quick question, where do the traders get that food from? So once again, this is something I cover in autistic detail. Where the fuck do you get your food from? Because I know it's not the fucking grocery store. Does mommy go and pick it up for you? Does the social worker come by once a week to drop it off at the front door? Shut up, bitch! Oh my god! The original Because that's what I want to know, man. Is that the caravan that you're talking about? Video. See, I take the time to go through nearly every town in the game, including all the major ones, to show what they have for crops and herded animals. Most have little to nothing. It's pathetic. No town has crops, besides Rivet City, and they make it clear they're done in a hydroponics lab, and it comes across as experimental. As for herded animals, for most locations it ranges from none to two. Our food is an exception with three or four. Canterbury Commons is an exception with three or four. We don't actually know if Canterbury uses them for food or not. See, Canterbury is the center of trade in the Dude, they really think that video games should be like a fucking one-to-one -one representation of real life. This shit is pathetic. Keep missing the point. Keep on. So what is the yep. fucking problem here, yep, dude? Yep. So the I problem is you're misinterpreting the video. Boom. That's the problem. Capital Wasteland. It's a hub for the traders, and they all use Brahmin. Tosinos pizza rolls and Capri Sun. <laughs> Yo, that's probably actually pretty fucking accurate. That's pack animals. Is much more like that probably is what's on the menu most days capri sun and fucking pizza rolls likely that these brahmin we see are spares to be swapped out for brahmin that were just on the road even if we were to ignore that entirely it's like three or four brahmin and not enough to sustain canterbury alone let alone the entire fucking wasteland and really boiling miss brown down just to a stupid character is rather reductive she is the impossible optimist that can teach the player character a lot about the capital wasteland with a cheery tone of voice that doesn't match this area. Moira Brown is so stupid. How stupid is she? Moira Brown is so stupid she sent you to the supermarket to pick up a loaf of bread 200 years after the apocalypse. Moira Brown <laughs> is so stupid she wants you to repel a possible food source from town in the apocalypse. Moira Brown is so stupid, she asks you to step on a landmine and report your injuries. Moira Brown is so stupid, she wants you to get acute radiation sickness so she can document your skin bubbling off your bones. Moira Brown is so stupid, she stitched a fucking smiley face in the back of your head to make you feel better. It's not reductive to call her stupid when the game very clearly and repeatedly flags her as being a fucking idiot through her dialogue and interactions constantly. And maybe that's why Creed is hating on her. Her being an optimist is not the problem. There are hopeful characters all throughout Fallout lore and in the games. The issue is she is suicidally stupid. It is frankly a miracle she hasn't been the reason the Capital Wasteland rediscovered the teachings of Darwin. In fact, it is such a miracle she manages to survive a fucking nuke if you blow up Megaton. I also really like the implication that I hate her just because she's positive. Fuck you, Vincent. Whoever. <laughs> I can't afford this shit! <laughs> Dude, he's actually fucking triggered. He's like, fuck you, Vincent. How fucking say, how fucking dare you say that about me? Does anyone else find this part funny? Because I'm failing to see what the fuck is the punchline here. Oh my god, bro. This is like some fucking... 
I don't even know what level of fucking degeneracy this falls on the scale of. Well, with the five, just got back from Indian Wells, almost got rear-ended by a drunk in a pink Range Rover. Oh, shit. What a night. Also, what is this? I feel like I'm going to pass it. Oh, here, I can tell you what it is, man. That's pretty straightforward. In Mr. Caption's video, he raises a very good point. All the plant life in the Capital Wasteland is dead. Everything outside Whoa. of Oasis, that is, which is a recent development and hardly anyone knows about. So for the remainder of this section, I'll be omitting Oasis. I know recent is a relative concept, but that's why you should really give context to statements like this. Most people would not assume the last 20 to 30 years is recent after all. God, he's getting pedantic again. See, in John's video, there were small points like this that I ignored because it was pointless to go in on them. For example, with the Tenpenny Tower quest, he said you had to kill the four ghouls when there were only three. I, I did not correct this shit. because the mistake he made didn't change the substance of the argument in the slightest. But more than that, I'm not fucking wrong here. In the grand scheme of things, 20 to 30 years is recent when we're talking about a wasteland that has had no plant life for 200 fucking years. So, he speaks about this being relative, but also undermines his own point by saying most people, not everyone. So he knows there are some people that would inherently understand what is being said. Now, when presented with a concept like plant life returning to a nuclear wasteland, I would say it's very easily argued that most people would consider 20 to 30 years as a re Zero with the five, they all talk about mole rats, a mutated monster, basically, but complain about how Megaton gets food and how it's not realistic, damn, like, it's just... And you really expect, like, Bethesda to build scaled farms? Like, okay, this farm could support 100 people, so we're gonna make sure the farm is the exact size that could support the population. No, they're not gonna fucking do that shit. It's a video game. Like, it's not real life. These dudes need to get a fucking life and stop looking to video games to fill that fucking void in their sad existence. Just like you, who needs to stop fanboying for Call of Duty and a corrupt CEO to fill that fucking void in your sad existence. Recent development in an apocalypse. The trees in Oasis are clearly fully grown as well. Or did you think the trees instantly sprout out of the ground at their full size in the first year? Now, ignoring the rest of the video we've covered so far, this does kind of strike me as proof that he's not actually listening to or considering the arguments being made at all. The reason I didn't elaborate was because basic common sense should have told you that 30 years is recent when you're talking about 200 years after the bombs dropped. 200 years of all vegetation being dead. That is, 3 twentieths, or 15% of the time that has passed since the war. Not to mention, of those 20 to 30 years, the vast majority of that time would have been with tiny twigs slowly breaking the ground, growing very little year after year until finally being even remotely what we would call a tree after four years, which would have a trunk thickness of about your arm. In seven to ten years, some trees, like pecan trees, would finally begin producing their fruit to even try and reproduce, which is even giving the game the benefit of the doubt that these trees produce fruit slash nuts that are even human edible to begin with. So for the vast majority of Oasis's existence, it would have just been Harold with a couple of saplings near him. In essence, Oasis is far too developed for the short time span it is supposed to have been in existence. Now I want to bring back this line for a moment. And I want to examine this initial journey in detail, as it really demonstrates the level of care and craftsmanship that goes into Fallout 3's world design. Yeah, the world design for Fallout 3 is broken on nearly every level. <laughs> this is going to be a rather large tangent, oh, but it's- Jeez, dude, I just- I can't believe this is actually a fucking real video, dude. Honestly. It's just incredible. Well, with the two- it was a Rolls, not a Rover. Oh, shit. It might have been stolen. Oh, damn. I was about to say, if it wasn't stolen, you should have fucking uh, let it hit you. Then you could have gotten a new car. It's necessary in order to fully debunk John's point beyond a shadow of a doubt, and additionally, preemptively debunk responses in the comments. 
As the response to the mole rats as a food source is the one point I made in the original video that saw the biggest pushback from people who defend Fallout 3 or John. <laughs> because it was clearly a straw man argument against John's poorly thought out and phrased theory about how people of Megaton get their food. A straw man, sometimes written as straw man, is a form of argument and an informal fallacy of having the impression of refuting an argument, whereas the real subject of the argument was not addressed or refuted, but instead replaced with a false one. I mean, we've already proven this man doesn't know what a fucking straw man argument is. It's not a straw man yeah. to take the exact argument someone made and argue against it. Notice how he also constantly gives John the benefit of the doubt. Oh, it's just the theory he had. It was never presented as such by John in the first place. But when it comes to anything I say, there is no such benefit of the doubt. This I wouldn't give it to you either. This actually seems like a good time to bring up another one of our interactions in the comments section. See, during a back and forth we had, he accused me of being dismissive of his arguments, as if he wasn't dismissing my arguments in the video because he just didn't like them. Such as when he claimed there's no proof that it doesn't rain in Fallout 3, despite this being an indisputable fucking fact. In response, I had said that he had made it pretty clear he wasn't coming into this with good faith, that he was seeking to debunk the criticisms, to which he basically admitted. This is a really big deal Got for these him. kinds of videos. This is why John's video was so shit, and this is one of the many reasons why Vincent Martin's video is so shit. Because they both started with their conclusion. As in Kane nostalgia with the two, I blew I Johnny Walker. Oh shit, that. man. Did it feel good though? He was a Scotchman. <laughs> Jesus. See here with the two, this makes me want to change my profile pic. All right. Nah, don't do it, man. Don't let these fucking degenerates ruin the shit you like. You can't let it them fucking take this shit from you. These people have nothing going for them in life. No one loves them, not even their fucking parents. You finished? I mean, there's so much self-pity. Oh my god, Grifter, did that happen to you? Causes so much projection here. And had to twist, distort, misrepresent, contrive, and bullshit their way through all the inconvenient facts to prove the ultimate point they're both trying to make. You can't give these fucking degenerates an inch. Because they'll just take a fucking mile. Vincent Martin didn't come into my video with any good faith or any intention of listening to what I had to say and checking for himself if it was true or not. He is looking to undermine and destroy, to debunk, by any disingenuous means, any criticism he doesn't like against a game he likes. Yeah, that seems to be his entire point behind all of this. When I posted yeah, my dude. comment in response to his video, in which I went very into detail about what he was getting wrong and why, his response to me was to basically ignore most of what I said and just hand wave everything else away. Rather than actually trying to counter anything or have a real discussion, he claimed I was dismissive in my comment, even though the whole reason my comment was as long as it was is because I was fully taking him seriously at that point. However, him and one of his staunch defenders seemed to take more issue with the fact that I was commenting rather than you, Cree. Like, they expected you to be the one making a comment, and the fact I was making one of my own volition is proof of you being a coward somehow. It's like no one else is allowed to have autonomy and do things because they want to. They both completely dismissed my criticism because I wasn't the person they wanted me to be. It showed me they really weren't <laughs> interested in arguing in good faith. They just want- Dude, you're a fucking brony. Dude, you're a fucking brony. No one owes you a good faith argument. You literally have a fucking profile picture art of you as a brony sipping a fucking cup of tea with a fucking tramp stamp on with a leather jacket. You have no right to a genuine argument. The only thing people should fucking do when it comes to you is point and laugh. That's it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a new low for our Lord and Savior, Grifter Christ. Dude's taking a page out of fucking Quantum TV. Want to blindly defend Fallout 3. Doesn't help Vincent then made a video in response to my comment literally titled, Pagan's Bad Faith. Right out of the gate framing me as some bad faith actor. When up to that point, I had been completely genuine and as polite as possible. Oh yeah, Sacred G. 
This is another fucking weirdo who came into my comment section with shit disingenuous arguments and got mad when I didn't fold immediately and accused me of not being able to handle criticism because I didn't fold for his terrible arguments. Sacred G likes to suck the nuts of anyone who dislikes me. When he heard Acerthorn had a feud with me, he immediately jumped to his side. At least until he realized how much of a scumbag Acerthorn is, then he distanced himself pretty quick. It's no surprise- British Potato with the 10 to give them some credit here. Vincent Martin is a moron. I've had to deal with the guy a few times. He makes really bizarre claims. Once he said, I manipulate people by using game footage. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't think there's a single intelligent entity in this entire fucking debate that I'm watching unfold right now. So, yes, in the fairness to these three, very special, special, and that I mentioned special individuals, the guy they're arguing with, I'm sure, is just as special as they are. But, yeah, I can 100% see that shit, man. This is a side of the internet that I always knew existed but never really wanted to fucking watch, but here we are. This motherfucker's self-awareness is in the fucking negatives. I say he's latched on to Vincent Martin like a fucking lamprey. Honestly, with the way these two are acting, it's coming across as really obsessive and weird. Hell, Vincent Martin even outed himself as hate-watching our podcast. Or maybe it's just attention-seeking and wanted us to cover him on the one-year anniversary stream and was mad that we didn't. In essence, when dealing with these two weirdos, keep the receipts so you can laugh at the clowns who got out-robusted by the local Wizard Federation delegate. Can you hear the mad honking from the clown closet? All of the plant life in the Capital Wastelands is dead. They're either burned trees or dead grass. Here, Creed expands on Mr. Caption's argument even further. Without presenting any evidence to support it, of course, I've already confirmed in the last video that the all the plant life is dead theory. It's just something Mr. Caption thought up with really nothing to back it up with. No evidence? What the fuck do you think the visual footage in the background is showing off all the dead trees and grass? Do you not have eyes? Yeah, man. To explain why he has Outer Worlds footage in the video instead of Fallout 3, blind and retarded is a dangerous combination. In Space Station 13, that is. So because this- Are you speaking from fucking experience, my guy? That is the question we need the answer to. Ironic. <laughs> Are you speaking from fucking experience on that one? Because I have an inkling that you might fucking be. It's a very basic observation as miles above Vincent's ability. I'll explain it slowly for him. The trees are all very clearly burned and don't have leaves. All the grass and other plant matter is brown and dead. No one in the entire capital wasteland is growing any kind of food outside of one hydroponics lab on a ship. There is no wild fruits or vegetables growing of any kind anywhere. Grass can go into a dormant state, in which it could survive about six months, with a little to no nutrients, sunlight, or water. More than six months have passed since the bombs dropped. In fact, it's been about 2,400 months since the bombs have dropped. Additionally, it does not rain in the capital wasteland. At all. <laughs> Ever. As evidenced by the game. This is something he tried to argue against in the comments with the most pathetic line I've ever seen. That it was engine limitations. But that rings a bit fucking hollow when Morrowind on the original Xbox was able to do this, and both Oblivion and Skyrim on the 360 were able to do this, and New Vegas had rain in an expansion. Even if the grass was still somehow alive but dormant, it still wouldn't be a sustainable food source for animals. It loses the nutrients required to sustain other creatures. Duh. It's why when grass goes dormant in grazing fields, farmers have to supplement their livestock's diet with other vitamins and grains, or they would all eventually die. <laughs> the grass being dormant for 200 years isn't oh. a defense, and wouldn't make the issue any less of a problem. Oh, oh my god. This is just incredible, man. Brit with the two, you knew about these people. This is all new to... I mean, I didn't know that these particular people existed. But I knew people like them existed. If that makes sense, Brit. 
This is just incredible. Absolutely fucking incredible. And Zier, but the two just to derail the lives. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. We need some derailing at this point. Also notice how he changes the pitch in my voice here to make me sound stupid. <laughs> you don't have to change the fucking pitch in anyone's voice for that shit to be accomplished. This isn't sped up at all. It's literally just the pitch shift. God, it's like someone's unattended retarded child is messing with the computer. Dog, you are literally describing yourself right fucking now. SK the Stalger with the two of these guys enlightening me, like Plato. Holy shit. They probably should take the advice of Socrates, though, because I have a feeling they've got some cheese pizza habits. What the fuck are you talking about? I'm just so ready to quit this fucking video right now, guys, after hearing all this fucking shit for about an hour. Good thing I only have, like, two more fucking minutes of this slander bullshit. Vincent has to edit your sound to make you sound dumb. Meanwhile, all we have to do is show his video for the same effect. But oh, got him, bro. Fucking destroyed. Holy shit. <laughs> Dude, fucking roasted. Defenses for this particular point in the comments have been nothing short of absurd. Some people have claimed it doesn't- We're almost at 58 minutes. Doesn't matter, which isn't even an argument. Some people have claimed that the plants are totally alive, they just don't look like it. Which isn't even worthy of response. And one guy pointed out that there's three living flowers in Arlington Cemetery, which I didn't even bother to confirm. I really don't know how Creed can be so smug when dealing with the evidence that can be found right there in the game world to support the fact that the plants are alive in Fallout 3. Poisoning the well. Poisoning the well. Poisoning the well. Alright, we're at 28, or fucking 48 minutes. Or fuck. Damn, now I'm fucking retarded, guys. I caught it. It's contagious. I caught the, uh, as the kids like to say. Autism. But anyway, we're at 58 minutes. We have passed the finish line. We can end this fucking miserable <laughs> fucking experience <laughs> of this shit. Oh my god. Dear god, dude. How people sit through this unironically amazes me. And that's my cue to cut you off right there. But yeah, guys, that's the end of this abortion of a live stream. And yeah, to be honest, guys, I really was not expecting this motherfucker to sink even lower than he already has after the Vanguard simping disaster stream. But after the recent 4090 drama and now this shit, I guess he's just asking at this point to be thrown further and further into the abyss. But anyway, guys, that's all the time I have for this video. Be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe if you like this one. And I'll see you all on my next upload. Peace out. Heads up, enemy UAV spotted. UAV recon standing by. Repeat, UAV recon is standing by.